Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new video on Prof Ball B. It's been a while since I've uh, created some um, technical videos, but uh, hey, here I am. I'm back and we're going to have a lot of fun. And uh, for the next uh, little while, I'm going to be uploading some videos to complement and support a uh, Java EE uh, course that I'm currently teaching. So what we're going to do today is actually we're going to create the venerable Hello World program. That is the uh, program that I created in every single, the first program that I created in every single language. And we're going to do the exact same thing with Spring Boot. So before you get started, um, you do have to have these essentials. You have to have uh, Java I'm using OpenJDK. You can use JDK as well. I get, you think you can use it for personal uh, purposes, um, but I decided just to go with the OpenJDK. Uh, installed properly, configured. So you might have to set up some paths, some environment variables. Uh, I'll leave you to Google this. Uh, if you're in my classes, the the links are posted on Slate. Uh, there's Eclipse IDE for Enterprise Java Developers installed. That's what I'll be using. Love IntelliJ IDEA as well, but I'm following uh, the other professors, and we're going to be. I'm going to be using Eclipse. Getting all the IDEs are, they share so much in common that uh, anyway, I think it's still good. And you also have the Spring Tools Four added to your Eclipse IDE. Okay, so those are the uh, requirements that you need before we get started. So I have all that installed. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go head on over to Eclipse and I'm going to go to my workbench. And from here, I'm going to actually create a new other. And here I'm going to select uh, Spring Boot and I'm going to select the Spring Starter Project. Okay. And I'm going to click on next. And we're going to keep this at the same as a spring.io. I'm going to leave it at com.example. Uh, I will call this hello world, the, the venerable, ooh, typo, the venerable hello world project. And I'm actually going to be using 14. I got a, I have a few different versions of Java installed. Anyway, we're going to leave this and I'm just going to change this to hello world. And that's it. I'm going to leave everything else the same. I'm going to click on next. And here's where we can uh, uh, select our dependencies. And what we will do is we're only going to select one. And the one we are going to select is Spring Web. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click all finishes off the screen. My apologies. I'm going to go ahead and click on finish. And uh, IDE is actually going to be creating this uh, project shell for me. And we're going to wait for a little bit while it builds everything. There we go. So here's our project. We look at the, if we look at our project explorer, if we open up our, um, our Java package at comexample.demo, we see that it created a main class and here, here is the main class. The main class is okay, eclipses. This is how we make it bigger. There we go. Okay, so the our main class is called Hello World Application, and here's a main method that, that we all uh, know and love. And in the main method, there is one just one line of code: Spring Application dot run, and then Hello World Application dot class, and passes in any arguments that were passed in at the command line. Okay. And notice there's an annotation here. Well, I'm not going to get into the details. This is we're just flying through this, just creating our Hello World project. Uh, but just just notice that there's an annotation here saying that this is a Spring Boot application. Um, and what I'm going to do right now, I'm actually just going to run this just to show you. If I click on Run, and I'm going to run this as a Spring Boot app, and I click OK, and there, there, are, there are some warnings, but it did, it did start correctly. And uh, let me just open up my open up Chrome. Let me bring it over here. 
and I'm going to do the one thing I do want to show you. Sorry, the one thing I do want to show you before we get to Chrome is if we go down here, notice we ha we see. If we go down here, we see that. Well, I see that the zoom doesn't work, but we see that the uh, we started the servlet engine, uh, Tomcat. And we also see that Tomcat is started on port 8080. Okay, we're not going to be worried too much about the context path. That just means it's at the root of the web server. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually open up Chrome or your browser of choice. And you can do HTTP localhost 8080. And you'll notice I get a 404 error. We didn't do anything, but you'll notice the web server is running. Right. Otherwise, it would just be giving a, you know, an error page. This is giving a white label error page. OK, this is the default from uh, from uh, from Tomcat. So let's go ahead. Now I'm actually going to uh, open up my resources section and in the static, I'm going to right click. And I'm going to create a new again, I'm going to choose other. Um, I prefer IntelliJ for this, but uh, Let's go ahead and we're going to do a web and we're going to do an HTML file. I'm going to click on next and here I'm going to call this one. I'm going to call this file. Uh, let's just call it home for lack of a better name. And I'm going to click on finish. And now we have a static HTML and uh, let's just go ahead uh, with title, oh, hello world, of course. Hello world. That's our title, and let's just create a very, very simple HTML page, like what I would call the programmer page. I'm not a, I'm not a front end developer, and we'll just say welcome, not welcome, hello world, hello world from Spring Boot. Okay, and and that's it. Very very simple. Notice, but you have to notice though that I did put it in the static folder. Uh, as we progress, we're going to start putting things in the templates folder, and that's when we're going to be using Timeleaf. But that's that's not quite right now. We're st we're still at the hello world. We're just starting. So let's go ahead now and run this again. I'm going to run this. Oh, and now see, I'm I'm going to say always save on run. And we're going to see our spring is loading up. And if I go here now to my local host. And I type in, I called it home, right? Home.html. Boom, we have it. Yay, hello world from Spring Boot. Okay, so we see we didn't accomplish a whole heck of a lot, right? We just created a very, very simple HTML page. And now we see we can access it if we reference it directly in the URL. However, however, if I want to, if I go just to the home page, the default page, there is no default page. So I'm still getting this error. Uh, I'm going to show you how to actually map uh, the default location or the, the, cust the, home, the home page, if you will, uh, to <laughs> home.html. Okay. Uh, a note in passing, if I would have named this index.html, then it would work. Uh, it would work as a, uh, here, let me just go ahead and show you that right now. I'm gonna rename this to index. And that did not work. Okay, let's try this again. Index.html. And let's go ahead and rerun this. And is it done? I think so. So now we can see that maybe it's not done. Oh, you know what? Notice here, and you might you might get this. So it's actually it's actually good that I that I got it. It says port eighty eighty is already in use because I didn't really shut it down. I just tried to run it again. So uh, because Tomcat's already running, I'm trying to create a different instance of Tomcat uh, on eighty eighty. So that's giving me an error. So what we sh what we have to do instead is we have to actually go here is relaunch. Okay, there's a few different ways of actually getting to there, but I'm just going to relaunch the Hello World application. This time I'm, I'm not going to leave until I see that, yes, it did start. We see here that it started. 
So let's go ahead and come here. And now we see that it works. Okay, so why does it why does it work? Now it's because the container will look for a, this is a, a naming convention H index. It'll look for index HTML, and if it finds it, then it serves it at the root. Uh, but I want you to sh I want to show you how to do it the Spring Boot way. Uh, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rename it back to home.html. And there we go. So now, and, and now if I launch and rerun, or sorry, just relaunch, I guess. And if I try to go from here, so now I'm getting that error again. Okay, so this is how, this is uh, what we're going to do is actually we're going to create a controller class. And uh, that controller class is going to, uh, uh, is going to have a method and we're going to actually map that method to requests of for the root directory. So let's just go ahead and do that right away. So what I'm going to do is right off the bat, I'm going to use uh, Java packages because it's a good it's a good way of doing things. So I'm actually going to go right click new package, and I'm going to call this one controllers, and I'm going to click on finish. And within that controllers package, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call this home controller. And uh, let's see what else. No, we don't necessarily need anything else here. I'm just going to click on finish. And here's my new class. And what I'm going to do First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create an annotation controller. And what this annotation tells the framework, again, I'm flying through everything. We're, when we're, uh, as we go through, we're going to be talking more about, uh, about what these annotations are. But for now, uh, I'm actually going to import this from uh, the stereotype, there we go, controller. So now this is telling the framework that this class has an important role to play. The framework is going to create an instance of this class and is going to, and is going to use it according to the other annotations that we put into it. And that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to create a method and this method is going to be public uh, string. It's going to return a string. You're going to see this over and over again. And we're going to call this, uh, let's just call it go home. Name, the name could be anything. It does not matter what the name is. And so here's our method, go home. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to return home.html. Okay, so this method returns uh, the string literal home.html that corresponds to this static home page that we created. So, so far so good, but this is not quite enough. Uh, we also have to annotate this method to saying that this is the method to call when our requests for uh, get requests in particular. We'll talk more about gets versus posts, etc. later on. But for now, we just get the that's get is the default, right, for HTTP anyway. So if you don't sm specify a method, it, it will be get. So here's where we're going to specify that uh, all get requests to the root, uh, we're actually this method, the, the container is going to call this method to find out what to do for all requests, get requests to the method. So let me go ahead and write my, um, uh, do, 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 do. let me just do this. Let me go, is it get request? Let me just see something here. Mm, no, it's not, it's get mapping. see <laughs> uh, there we go there we go so I'm I'm actually whoa I'm actually a little bit new to this to this I don't know everything by heart yet so so now what we're going to do is notice our annotation uh, get mapping from the spring framework and here we're saying that the mapping going to the root that re represents the root is call this method this method will tell you where we'll tell the the, the framework where to go, which resource to use. So let's go ahead and restart this. 
and we're going to come back here. I see down here, hello world application started, so we're good to go. And I'm going to hit on the refresh. And see, now we see that it does work. We, even with our, our, uh, cla or, sorry, our HTML file of the name home.html, we see that it is the default web page that is displayed when the user goes to the root of the website. So we see that we could have done it just by calling it index.html, but we see the power. And this is just, we just scratched a little. This is the Hello World program. And we see, this, we see the power of using a controller and then mapping. Uh, and you could, you could put more than one URL or path here. We're going to talk more about that as, as, the, um, as we progress through this. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. That's all we did. We created a very simple Hello World project uh, and uh, created a Spring Boot application. And it created this one it's main, meth main class, it has a main method, and all it does is run our application. And we created a controller class. And well, first we created an HTML class. And we put that in the static as a static resource. We're going to talk more. The templates is going to come in the foreground very soon, but we created in the static folder an HTML page. And in our controller, we're specifying in our controller class, that's annotated as a controller, this name could be, could be anything. The word controller does not matter. It's the annotation that matters. And we created a method, and again, the method name does not matter. It's the annotation that matters. So we created this, uh, method called go home that returns home.html <clears throat> excuse me and we use the uh, get mapping annotation to say for all uh, requests to the slash to the home or the root uh, please go to you know home.html and you'll notice that we can still specify the uh, because it is in the static folder we can still specify the, the name of the file itself and it will work as well okay so that's it for this video, very simple. I hope you could follow along and created your first Hello World Spring Boot application. And that's it, thanks for watching and I hope you comment, like, subscribe. And if you have any questions, uh, by all means, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer everything. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.